Can you hear me chewing in the microphone? What if I was eating carrots? See ya, ASMR. Hi everyone, I'm Mia and welcome back to another episode of Recipe Drop. Today we're making a raspberry creme fresh semifredo or ice cream-ish cake, which is a creamy and refreshing dessert perfect for any summer occasion. It's great if you want a dessert that looks elegant but is easy to make, not to mention you can make it far in advance and take it out of the freezer right before serving. We'll be making a quick no-churn ice cream base with a raspberry compo and pouring it over an almond dequoise cake, which is not as scary as it sounds and is actually what we're going to start with. So I have four eggs and I'm going to use the egg whites for the almond dequoise, the egg yolks for the ice cream base. So normally when I separate eggs, I separate the yolk and the white into two small bowls before adding um, just in case I get any shells into the egg whites. But because the egg white is the first thing that I'm adding to the, this bowl, I'm just doing it directly into this one. That also means I have to clean one less bowl. Oh, I did get a little shell. Usually the easiest way to get eggshell out of egg white is using a shell, but I already threw it away, so this teaspoon actually worked pretty well. Now I'm gonna whip these on medium high speed until it starts getting foamy, and then I'm gonna gradually start to add the sugar. Now you can see it's starting to get foamy, so I'm gonna gradually add the sugar. By adding it gradually, it kind of allows the egg whites to become more fluffier and take on more volume. So if you add it all at once at the beginning, you're gonna have less whipped egg white than you would if you're doing it this way. Now I'm going to beat this on high speed for about five to seven minutes until I have really stiff peaks and it's super glossy and shiny. You can see all the ripples and everything. That is a sign that it is very well whipped. This looks pretty good. So there are actually a few things that can impact how your egg whites whip up, but this looks perfect. So I have 100 grams of almond flour here. I'm going to add just a pinch of kosher salt. I'm going to add this into the egg white. It's kind of similar to making macarons where you have the egg whites and then you fold in almond meal or almond flour. You want to be careful not to overmix because that's going to get rid of all the air bubbles in the egg whites um, and kind of deflate it. So I'm kind of just going around in motions like this. And the classic is, people say, the figure eight. So kind of go like this, and then down through the middle, and then around. Here I also have a nine inch springform cake pan. Sometimes I use an eight inch, sometimes I use a nine inch. The only difference will be that if you have a nine inch, it'll be a little bit thinner. If you have an eight inch, it'll be a little thicker. Um, and the key here is you don't want to grease the cake pan at all, because with the Dequaz, since the only leavening in the Dequaz is the egg whites, you need that tension from the cake pan to kind of hold it up. So if you have fat around here, once the Dequaz cools, it's going to pull away from the sides. You're going to have a Dequaz that's too small for your ice cream cake. I'm going to add it right into the cake pan. And Dequaz is actually more of a French thing than a Swedish thing, but it's used a lot, I think, just in general in European baking and a lot in Swedish baking. It's a really good cake base, especially for those people who are gluten-free, because again, obviously there's no gluten in this. And what I like about a Dequaz is that it looks, tastes, and feels a lot fancier than it actually is. So really, again, as you just saw, all it is is whipping egg whites and then folding in a nut flour. So now I'm just spreading it out into a really even layer. And as I mentioned before, you want it to touch all the sides so that's really important because it needs that tension to hold it up. I love an offset spatula for this. It makes it really easy to get a super even layer. Okay, that looks pretty good. Because I like the sides to be completely like, nice and clean, I just take a paper towel and I kind of go around the sides, just cleaning up any extra batter. So I've also preheated the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This is very temperature dependent. So if you feel like your oven runs a little hot, make sure to check it before the timer's up because I've done that a few too many times where I've burnt it or like browned it a little too much. So keep an eye on it. So anyway, this is gonna bake for 15 minutes. While we have the Dequaz in the oven, we're gonna start making the raspberry, the quick raspberry compote. So I have one pint nearly one pint um, of fresh raspberries. I'm gonna add them to a small saucepan. 
And then I have two tablespoons of granulated white sugar, medium heat, and I'm just gonna give it a quick mix. So for this raspberry compo, I'm not adding any water, and that's because the sugar and the heat is gonna help to draw out all that moisture from the raspberries. And the point is to kind of cook this down so that most of the water evaporates so that we don't get those ice crystals in the ice cream cake. So if we added more water, that would kind of defeat the purpose. So I'm gonna let this simmer for about eight to 10 minutes until most of the water has evaporated and it looks pretty nice and thick. One thing though is you don't wanna cook it too much because you obviously don't want it to burn on the bottom, but you also don't want it to get too thick because then it's gonna to be too much of a jam and it's gonna be a little bit harder to mix into the ice cream base. So this is what we're looking for. Not too thick, it's not really jammy yet. And that's, this is exactly kind of where you want to stop. It's super important that we let this cool completely before adding it into the whipped cream that we're going to mix because if it's still hot when we add it, it's going to melt the whipped cream and we don't want that. Oh, our timer went off. Okay, let's check it out. You can see here how all the sides are intact. It hasn't come away from the sides at all. And if we had added fat to that, that would have happened. And especially once we start letting it cool. So I'm just going to put it off to the side and let it cool completely while I finish the semi-fredo base. I'm actually gonna mix them in our new Rosti mixing bowls. These are really awesome because it's not often that you see a bowl with a spout that also has a lid that fits perfectly, kind of. There we go. It clicks right on, you can see, it covers everything. Another thing that I also like that they have is they have these silicone rings on the bottom, which makes it so that they really stay put on the counter. And that's really great for if you're mixing something, you don't want the bowl to move. They also come in a few different colors and a few different sizes. This is the biggest one. So there's a large, medium, and small, so perfect for whatever it is you're making. So for this cake base, I have the four eggs that we separated before. And then, because this is a creme fraiche semi fredo, I am gonna add three fourths of a cup of. <gasps> it's like when you open a thing of yogurt and it like pops out. So this is eight ounces. Gonna kind of just eyeball this. Three fourths of this. Kind of making a mess. Because this isn't baking, and since it's just going in the freezer, it's okay if you have a little too much creme fraiche, if you have a little less. And also, if you don't have creme fraiche at all, that's totally fine. I would, in that case, just use a little bit more whipped cream. And now I'm also gonna add one half of a cup of confectioner sugar. You could use granulated, regular granulated white sugar too, but the powdered sugar just dissolves a little quicker in this than the regular white sugar does. I'm also gonna add about half a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. I like vanilla bean paste, or I like to use it whenever I can, just because it has super concentrated flavor. Um, but you can use vanilla extract too, or you can use vanilla beans if you have that. And I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, just to help maximize all the flavor. And then lastly, I'm gonna grate in the zest of half a lime. And then I'm gonna zest the rest of it on top later. I don't know why I didn't grab a microplane, but if you have that, probably recommend using that instead because you can see these are kind of large pieces. All right, now I'm just gonna mix this together. So now I'm gonna whip the heavy cream. If you can, definitely keep your heavy cream in the fridge until it's ready to whip. In these stand mixers, although I love them, it's super easy to over whip really quickly. So if you're using one of these, definitely keep an eye on it. Don't walk away like I did last time. So I'm gonna mix this just on medium low to low speed. If you feel like it needs just a little bit more, you can just go in and just whisk it up a little bit by hand. Once it's gone to this point, any type of movement is gonna thicken it quite a bit, even if you were to go in with a spatula or if you were to go in with just a whisk like this. See that? made a big difference and I think I whipped for maybe 10 seconds. All right, now I'm gonna fold this into the creme fraiche and egg yolk mixture. So now I'm just folding the whipped cream gently into the mixture until everything is completely combined and we have a really smooth and even looking ice cream base. So compared to when we mix in the almond flour to the egg whites, where you kind of have to be careful to not deflate so much of the egg, here when we're mixing the egg yolk and creme fraiche into the whipped cream, it's okay if you aren't too careful because any more air that you whip in is just gonna make it more fluffy and more stiff. 
our Duquas and the Raspberry Compo isn't completely cooled. And as I said before, it's super important that everything is cold or at least room temperature. So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge while I wait for them to cool down. And I'm gonna add the lid back onto the bowl. All right, so I think everything is cooled. So now I'm gonna add in the cooled raspberry compote to the ice cream base. And you can see here that it's not jammy at all, which is perfect. It's gonna be really easy to mix in. And the thing here too is either you can fold it in so that there are nice streaks if you want that. I personally like to just fold it in completely. I feel like it's easiest. And I just like having the raspberry all throughout the semi fredo. So if you did want streaks, you would kind of just go like this. It's pretty self-explanatory, I guess. But yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. And I like doing it this way too because then the whole thing turns like a nice pink color. So now I'm gonna pour it just right onto the cooled Dequaz. And so what gave me the idea to make this is a very similar ice cream cake that my grandma makes quite a bit. I have so many memories of being over at hers having dinner and then she kind of sneaks off into the kitchen and comes back with like a full ice cream cake. She makes these really far in advance and keeps them in the freezer for when she's having guests over. That's one of the things that I like most about this recipe. And now I'm just gonna spread this out into an even layer. She actually makes a really good one that's very lime heavy and it's so refreshing and like perfect for summer, it's delicious. So now this is gonna go in the freezer for probably at least eight hours, but first I'm gonna cover it with a lot of plastic wrap. The idea here is to take the plastic wrap or you can use parchment too and place it right on top of the ice cream. And you can see here, I have a few air bubbles and unfortunately there are gonna be ice crystals that form here, but that's okay, there's not that much surface area. Try to get as many air bubbles out as possible and press it down so that it touches the whole surface. Let's go put this in the freezer. We have like 10 fridges in this office, it's great. Okay, I'm going to get some raspberries for the top of the cake. Wait, shoot, I don't know if we have any raspberries. I don't have any, I don't know if we have any more. Should I just use strawberries instead? Yeah. I feel like that's fine, right? We're using strawberries instead. I feel like it'll be just as good. Okay, so we're using strawberries instead. For the strawberries, I think, I feel like slices would be nice, just like casual slices. I'm gonna slice them in half like this, and then I think I'm gonna cut them into little wedges like this, or half moons, I guess. I'm probably gonna use maybe like, do like a cup of sliced strawberries. Okay, that's probably good. Let's go get the ice cream cake. Enter swap. So here I have the finished ice cream, or the finished semi fredo. This is a swap. So you can see here that there are no ice crystals on top, which is exactly what we wanted. So while that sits just for a second, just to kind of warm up a little bit, I am gonna cut some mint too. I almost forgot. So you could either tear the mint or you could do what I'm doing, which is chiffonade. Hmm? Chiffonade, what's the way you roll it up, right? Chiffonade. chiffonade. So roll it up and then I'm gonna slice it up into thin ribbons or thin strips. The mint is gonna go really nice with the creaminess of the semifredo and the raspberry and also the lime as well. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and plate it. This is a cake plate from AO Glass. So the main difference between the swap and the one that we just made is that this is an eight inch, so you can see that it's a little bit smaller and it's also a little bit, the cake is gonna be a little bit thicker. And I did actually use parchment paper when I made the duquoise just on the bottom, not on the sides. Sometimes I do that um, if I, don't want to serve the cake with the bottom of the spring form pan. So one tip that I do if I do use parchment paper and I don't want to add the parchment paper to the cake plate is while it's still very frozen, take the plastic wrap that I had from before, flip it over, and then you can kind of remove the parchment paper and the cake plate like that. And then just flip it over and Add it to the plate. I'm gonna add a nice pile of strawberries right on top. I'm actually excited to taste it with strawberries because every other time that I've made it, it's been with raspberries, but I feel like it's gonna be really good. 
a semi fredo is pretty much an ice cream cake without having to use a ice cream maker. It makes it really easy to just make this like beautiful, decadent looking dessert. Now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of powdered sugar. Because the strawberries are wet and they have a lot of moisture, it's kind of gonna melt right onto the strawberries, but I still feel like it's a nice little finishing touch. Go in with the mint. This is better than the one I had before. So now I'm just gonna grate lime zest right on top too. And because the semi fredo is a pretty light treat, you could serve this for fika at like 3 p.m. if you don't wanna just have it, if you don't wanna wait and have it for dessert after dinner. Here we have it, the raspberry creme fraiche semi fredo with strawberries today. It looks super delicious and I'm so excited to try this version. This probably serves around 12 to 14 people depending on how thin of a slice you cut. I feel like my grandma always slices us the thinnest little slices. If you have a hard time cutting into it, just let it rest for an extra like five or 10 minutes. So, uh oh, oh no, putting it back on there. Strabo down. down. But the nice thing about when you cut small slices is that then you're more guaranteed to get seconds and it'll last longer. So I love that you can see the different layers. So you have the almond quoise. It's super nutty and chewy and is really nice texture contrast between the silky and really light semi fredo. Do you like your cakes standing up or laying down? I feel like it depends on the cake. I what think about this one? one? Deserves to be like laying down. All right. I feel like I'm just gonna knock it over if I. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's easier to get a bite of everything if it's laying down. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Thank you. Did you ever eat ice cream with a fork growing up? Or yeah. You were too lazy to wash a spoon. Yeah. It's also I kind of like the like. The texture felt different if you eat it with a fork than a spoon. Mmm. -hmm. The lime really shines through. Can I have a bite of yours? Yeah. So I don't have to cut another piece? Go on him. Wow, that was really good. The Dequaz. Dequaz. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's light. It's very smooth. This is a perfect summer treat. Thank I you. I make this for like a summer dinner. And you just leave it in your freezer. You make it the Yeah, week exactly. The week before. Make it a quaz. Really good. A de quaz. <laughs> so if you do want to make this, you can find the recipe linked down below in the description. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Let me know if there are any other Swedish-inspired desserts that you would want to see or any desserts in general.